Uh, three, two, one, and we're live. Wait, I didn't even check my microphone. Let's turn this down. What's going on? What's up, people? It's your boy, Kevin Yee. If you don't know what my channel is about, it's all about escaping the nine to five, whether you're a pharmacist and all that, and just truly investing in yourselves. Uh, that's one of the major, major things I've done through most of my life, man. If I were to really kind of talk about kind of my journey, man, investing, <laughs> It's really crazy, bro. Like I've always been either investing in index funds or stock market. And then later, as I got more and more advanced, um, I started investing more into my education. Right. And I'm not talking about when I say education too, I'm not even talking about um, like school education or anything like that. I'm really talking about um, I'm just really talking about more of the kind of like alternative education into business and stuff like that and it's just really been a crazy journey <clears throat> and um one of the things that made me want to kind of talk about this su subject today of like taking risk and investing into yourself is because i saw a video by brian rose and um he was talking about he was actually talking about his first time investing you know into himself and like remembering like remembering where he came from one of the things that he came from was like doing podcasts and stuff and people were asking him hey what are you doing and stuff um let me show you guys the video really quick let me just open it up um looks like i got one person in here for that one person make sure to hit that like button but yeah i know i'm streaming a little late today i know it's the first weekend of summer too so i don't expect a lot of people to be on this today but you know <clears throat> one of the biggest like here let me see london let me type this up uh this was the video i saw let me make this a little bit wider can you guys see that london real risk i think i think that's what it's called yeah how to take a risk so i think this was at least one day ago i am going to copy the link and send it to you um and put it in the chat but uh, before we, if you're watching this, I'd love to kind of hear what you guys are doing this weekend and stuff like that. Uh, let me know what kind of risks are you taking in your life. And uh, let me just post that as well. Right. <clears throat> Indeed. Uh, hold on. Let me, let me feature some of your comments, guys. Uh, tsh, 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 tsh. Comments. They changed all the hotkeys. Here we go. Uh, lovely says a uh, lovey love says indeed one of those traps of faith include getting the holy ghost leaps 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 of faith okay gotcha awesome cool so yeah man i i've just been really because here's the thing man like one of the ways that uh i make a lot of my money right now is that i do high ticket closing i don't think that's a secret but I talk to new entrepreneurs all the time or even seasoned business vets. And sometimes they're just so scared to invest in themselves. And here's the thing. I've been in their shoes before, like especially with people like like, for example, recently, one of the major investments I made recently was actually working with Scott Olsford. <clears throat> I thought I spent almost like 10 G's with him, but his program really was really, really great. And it really changed my life because it kind of gave me a more holistic view of high ticket like the whole high ticket programs not only just from the sales part not only from just the marketing part but how do you structure a really solid high ticket program and if anything it made my closing a lot better because i understood the whole like framework of what goes in a high ticket program but you bet your ass when uh like i was talking to scott and i was a little nervous when he said 10 g's i told myself whatever the price is kevin you will get your roi from it and that is faith within yourself, whether you like, you're going to either learn a really expensive lesson or you're going to make it work out. And uh, so far it's been working out in different ways that, well, I don't want to, I don't want to get into it, but uh, because you guys will find out if you guys are part of my email list, you know, I keep it hundred percent real and I tell you everything that's going on as well. Right. Uh, Bree Bree says, Hey, just signed up for your investing course. Love it love it brie um i'm pretty sure that you signed up for my master class if you haven't checked out my as we're talking about my master class right now why don't why don't we just do a shameless plug why not um guys if you want to check out my master class um 
And truly, it's not one of those like, hey, man, check out 45 minutes for my masterclass and I'll give you strategies. No, what I'm giving is actually very real. And um, like I'm giving out like if you're if you live in the US, you want to learn how to set up your 401k. I show you step by step. And that's one of my master classes. I literally took 25% of my actual real course and I, I threw it in here. And so I basically help you set up your first pillar of investing. So it's really a value. By the end of the year, I really want to make sure that a thousand people get their hands on it. Um, I think I'm a quarter of the way there. And it's going to be, it's a really great course. I'm always going to be improving it and improving it over and over again. But yeah, man, thank you, Bree, for really signing up for the for the course. I hope you really like it. If you have any feedback or if you have any questions, please let me know, especially in this early stage of launching my course. Um, I just want to make sure that everything makes sense. Everything is good. People have been emailing me back and like, I'm not going to lie. When I first did, I actually talked a little bit about it, but uh, where's refugeehustle.com? I love this like screen screen share by the way but i actually talked about what it's like creating an online course in my refugee hustle article if you guys haven't checked that out there's another shameless plug but check out my article man i talk about like what it's like creating an online course and like i always this is me in pharmacy school with hair bro <laughs> good times i miss it man i miss my pharmacy school friends no lie i i miss them a lot but um yeah, I talk about what it's like creating an online course and you think it's so easy, but it's actually a lot of a lot of hard work, man. And a lot of uh, there's a lot of work that goes into everything. And I tried so hard just trying to perfect everything as well. So it's just been it's just been a huge journey. I'll tell you this. It doesn't take five years to make a course. I've been trying to do this course for five years, but finally feels so good to just launch something and just give something of value to people. Um, and I really like I even if you don't buy the course, it's cool. I just want people to just to start investing. And that's why I give so much value with the free masterclass, man. And I I, I guarantee you, once you get set up, you're going to want to take the next bite and the next bite and the next bite. So check it out. You're, you guys will love it. But yeah, I was just like really thinking about like how much how much I've invested over the years. I think I'm up to 70K like in different things I've invested in. Right. And the learning never ends. If you think that one course will be the one and you're smooth sailing from there, all the top people, all the top like marketers, top business people, we all buy each other's shit, dude, and just love learning. Right. And um, it makes the marketplace a lot better because you're always improving your offer and stuff like that. And there's so many moving pieces to it. And so like, if you are investing, whether it's just like regular investing through the stock market or you're investing in a business, you have to get over the fact that nothing is guaranteed in life. In fact, and, and I know it's like scary not knowing there's a guarantee, but here's the thing. Nine to fives aren't guaranteed. Four, like Social security is supposed to be guaranteed, but you're not. we're probably not going to see it when we grow up, especially if you're probably like, my age, the age of 31, you're not going to see that shit growing up. There is no guarantee with the stock market, but the only thing that we can really promise ourselves or look at is previous history and do our best to make the best decisions and really ask ourselves, hey, there's a cost to everything. Every action, there's a cost, right? Inaction is also an action in the decision that you're making, right? So really paint the picture of what is it costing you not to invest right so i'll tell you this i use it in my course too i'm not sure if i outlined it in the master class or anything like that but i'll just give you a quick freebie every single year you're not investing guess how much you're losing and if you don't believe you're losing you are losing it's called something called inflation and if you take a look at the numbers for inflation let me pull them up inflation us statistics if if you don't believe it you're like, have you ever heard, like, my dad used to, back when my dad was alive, he used to be like, yo, they used to, like, back in my day, it was a nickel to watch a movie, right? That's why they used to call it a Nickelodeon, I think, right? Because you could go watch movies uh, on the, like, for nickel back in the day. Where's the organic or the, is it Bureau of Labor Statistics, maybe? Oh, fuck. I can't remember. I can't find it. I put it in my course, but the thing is, is just that. You know, every single year you're losing two to four percent 
um, based off inflation. And that's doing nothing because every single year we're losing, we're losing money. Uh, we're losing the value of our money. Maybe it's the government printing out a ton of money. Uh, it, there's a lot of different factors, but I think that's a major thing. And by keeping your money in a bank account, you're actually losing. And by not getting a raise every single year, you're actually <laughs> losing. So, you know, that's, that's something that's really, you always got to assess, right? And maybe if you're investing into like a certain business model, maybe if you want to learn a mentorship, how to set up a digital marketing agency, or you're learning like, I don't know, Shopify dropshipping or Amazon FBA or, um, what else? Dan Locks high ticket closer thing by not investing yourself. What is that costing you? by keeping your lifestyle the way it is and assuming that you're going to be successful because don't go into business if you don't think you're going to be successful. And I'll tell you this, <clears throat> everybody wants success rates when it comes to programs, but the true indicator for success is like what you put into it. As long as the business model is tested, you've seen other people do well in it. It doesn't really matter because you got to ask yourself, what's going to make me that that successful testimonial student or that success story, right? I always ask myself that. That's what, like when I did Dan Locks, I didn't even know what, you gotta keep in mind, I didn't even know what high ticket closing was, man. But I just told myself like, let's let's do my very best at it and just try to kill it. And now like, it's really crazy um, because after I, I launched my failed high ticket program, all these requests for closers started coming in. I get so many requests to, to do closing it's ridiculous it's an awesome feeling living a life of abundance and i've just been closing more and more deals getting better with my closing and stuff but man it it is an amazing feeling and i asked myself like dude if i didn't if i went back to a regular nine to five job where would i be where would i be i'd still be at a job that i fucking hate i wouldn't have the the opportunity to like work from home and stuff like that and I'm trying to disconnect myself and just enjoy life a little more. So after I'm done with the stream, I'm actually going to go to a boba shop or something and just hit up my friends and just chill or something like that. I don't know. I want to do something different. That's all I'm just trying to say. But at least I have the flexibility to control my schedule, do what I want and stuff like that as well. Right. Uh, Bree Bree says, I love the taco truck method. I love it. <laughs> I just tried to make it. it took me a long time. And that that is the all my stories in the course are actually very true, right? So yeah, love that you understand the taco truck method. Thanks for info. I'll check it out. Love it. Thank you. Lovely love, lovey love. Appreciate it. Um, but like I was saying, so many times we get so caught up in just like a cost of a item or cost of a program, but we never think about the amount of return we can potentially make if it does work out. And we're always like so prone to like, oh, what if it fails? What if it fails? If that's where all your attention is, you're focusing so much on what if it fails? Guess what? It's going to happen. Absolutely. Not to say that you should ignore any risks, but what I'm, what I'm saying is like, hey, why don't we ask ourselves the opposite question as well? Like way out the other side too. just be like, what can I do to make this work out? What can I do to make this win? Because the, the truth is no program like online programs, especially just like school. I mean, there's people that sleep through school, like college and stuff. There's people that, you know, just want to just, just like watch like information on, on any online program and they never do jack shit about it. Here's the truth. Don't buy like for my investing course, right? Unless you click those buttons, your, you will never, your money will never invest itself. You have to put in some sort of work, some sort of energy into into a program to make it work out for you right that's true for any program right for example if you're going to spend seven weeks in dan locks just watching the program and not do jack shit because i know there's people that you if you're watching this on the replay and you take taking the course and you've been waiting for over a year to get results and you're just waiting for some magical fucking fairy to come guess what you're gonna you're nothing's gonna happen the last thing you need is probably more information. What you need is take the information that's presented to you and apply it and really test it and really make sure that you're executing because I mean, I've been in those shoes before. It's scary sometimes, man. Like, I mean, fear is what kept me from launching my course for so many years. And as soon as like I got my first few sales, man, for my investing course and people are like, dude, this is a great course. 
I was like, dude, I'm a fucking selfish asshole, man. I'm just so caught up in my own head and we stop ourselves from our own like greatness or our own potential, man. Um, it's not only with like, my, the, like investing course or anything like that, but you know, same goes with like any course that I've, I've bought in the past. I always try to go hundred percent into it, man. And, um, it's never let me down. The only times I've ever failed in my life where I didn't get the ROI was because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't apply myself. I didn't go a hundred percent into it. I didn't have my full focus on anything, man. So just food for thought, man, whatever you do, make sure that you go in with a certain mindset that you're going to make it work. And usually attention go energy goes where attention goes or energy flows where attention goes. I think that's what the saying is, but yeah, for those six people watching this, make sure to hit that like button. Let me know what you guys are doing this weekend. What so, so what are some sort of things that you're thinking about investing with? I would love to kind of hear your feedback, what you're up to, and let's just have a really kick-ass conversation, man. Um, yeah. So, yeah, like I guess that's been sort of my thoughts recently, just because I've been just talking to so many new business owners and stuff. Um, I even talked to this one kid. He was trying to start up a business. Like this is for one of my clients. He started trying to start up a new business, but he had the money. He had everything. He saw. He said he saw the ROI, all that sort of stuff. But really, at the end of the day, I think the biggest fear of pulling the trigger is knowing that you can actually get the results, and that's not something within a program that can do that you can do. You have to have that mindset of, hey, it's going to be uncomfortable. I don't know everything but I'm going to make it work. And you need that mindset. That's a prerequisite. If you don't have that mindset, stay at a nine to five job because business is not for you. Um, I, f I really feel strong in that because that's why I, like you, you take any program mindset is always the number one thing. Like I've taken enough programs where I realized mindset is the number one thing. Execution is the number one thing. They drill that in your fucking head because guess what? It's so true. If you don't have the balls to really execute and really take at least accept some sort of risk and take calculated risk, not gambling, but calculated risk, then you, you'll never be an entrepreneur, right? At all. Because there's always a level of uncertainty. And you got to realize that's part of the journey. You're going to fall down. It's I know it sounds corny as fuck, but you're going to fall down. You're going to have bad periods. You're going to have good periods, even with investing. But if you look at things from a long-term point of view, and that's what I really stress in my investing course, Look at things from a long-term point of view, right? That's how you should look at your investments, right? Because you're always going to suck no matter what you do. You're always going to suck when you try something new, right? So, yeah. Um, I'm trying to start a wholesale business while I work on becoming a fashion designer. Taking me six years because of fear. Bree, I would love to kind of... Bree, Bree, I would love to kind of hear what's going through your head. What's um, Where does the biggest fear come from? In fact, it'd be kind of cool if I could get you on a Skype call if you're down, man. Uh, like right now, we can go live or something like that. If you're not comfortable, totally cool. But I think it'd be kind of cool just to get some guests like on this channel right now and just like kind of talk about what's going through your mind and just have a discussion about like the fear that's going through your head. Let me know if you're down, if you're not totally cool. But um, yeah, um, I I know that fear. It's just like, trust me. For an online course, it's relatively low risk to to start up and set up, right? It's very, very, very low risk to do something like that. And it took me five years to actually do it, right? But if, when you do it, oh my God, it's so much relief. It's so much relief. Whether you, you fail or not, just take a calculated risk. Set up a certain amount that you're willing to kind of lose. Not lose, but really invest like either you, you take two things away. You either get a business or you learn an expensive lesson. And a lesson sometimes is more valuable than the actual business itself. Right. Um, currently investing a acorns, acorns, bro. <laughs> want to put, uh, want to put into S and P 500 going to do your free course. Yeah, you really should. Everybody should like, everyone should at least have a Roth IRA. That is the number one goal that I want for people, right? I just want people to do that. How much money do you earn from closing? Love you from India. <laughs> Love from India. Big ups to India, bro. Um, by the way, speaking about like India, man, 
I don't know what the buying culture is over there or something like that, but or like it's 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 very different, man. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, like I've never I don't think I've ever closed an Indian person ever in my life. And I don't know if it's a different buying culture or something like that. Um, but it's just like that's where the fear always like oh man. Like that's where I notice like there's certain cultures where fear is such a big big factor right asians are easy for me like east asians and stuff are pretty easy for me because just because i level with them i know what it's like but for indian culture man it's always really really hard to kind of get over it because i feel like in that sort of culture they're so like not they don't the key to being a successful entrepreneur too is like thinking more of not just initial costs but really thinking about roi on a return return on investment and being comfortable hey maybe you don't get that roi as well right um so um but as money for closing it really depends like it depends if i have a good week like i'll give you an example one deal i closed earlier this week uh i'll tell you one of my good days right and i'll tell you one of my bad days right so on one of my good days um i closed a 10g like mentorship type of thing i made about i made like a, a g from that i had another client um more digital marketing and stuff um we closed like was it six to eight k or maybe 10k something like that uh, i wasn't on that because i managed that project myself and so in one day i made like and maybe i get to, did i get another sale through another thing let's call it 15 1500 that day that's like pretty close to my FU money. But on some days, there's days that I don't close at all, right? There's 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 days that I don't close at all. So it really depends. It's just like so different, bro. Lol. <laughs> Rohan. Rohan, my boy, is just like lol. Uh, Androx is like lol. I'm not afraid of losing money. That's part of the game. It's more fear of not being great and not believing myself. Also, emotional support from family. Yeah. Uh, you're cleaning your room and listening. It's all good, Bree Bree. Maybe we can do it some other time. Feel free to hit me up on um IG or like Facebook or my email list. And uh if you wanna if you wanna do some cool content together, I'm down. I, I just love to I just love helping people, man. And I think that's one thing I'm always lucky to have is just a down ass community, man. So um not afraid of losing money, not fear of being great. And here's the truth fear of success is really real. Like Fear of success is fucking real. There's been times where I've been like when I first started closing, when I was so close to getting a deal, like my body would literally shut down. I get so tired. Like, and if you know me, I'm pretty energetic most of the time, but you know, I was so down and I just felt the energy fading away from me, bro. And that really sucked. Um, and I think it was that fear of success where, you know, that that really pushed me to push my product more and more and more down the line. Um, I could have definitely made more, a lot more money if I uh, did it a lot sooner, but I chose I didn't. And it, that was my own bullshit that got in my head. And sometimes when we're so caught up in our head, Bree I'll bring it back to you for a second. <clears throat> sometimes when we're so caught up in our head, we're being an asshole, right? Because if you... If you have a great, um, you said you're in wholesale business. Um, I'm not quite sure. Is it wholesale real estate, wholesale? Like what are we talking about when you say wholesale, like flip, like arbitrage type of business? Anyways, if you have a killer product that you know that you can help people with, then you're being selfish by not giving that out to the world, right? At least for me, I was being fucking selfish in the world by not having my investment course a lot sooner, because here's the truth my my pharmacy friends they all needed to learn how to invest but no one taught them right no one taught them and i could have helped them if i really wanted to if i really was selfless i would have like given that free masterclass to people and teach taught people how to set up the first roth ra man and just like go at it but i didn't and it, because i was too caught up in my own bullshit thinking about oh i'm not good with technology i'm not good with setting up this i'm not good at that right but that's our own bullshit bro sometimes you know i'm not sure if you any let me ask you guys for the people watching this do any of you guys feel the same way as me right thank you for the likes by the way appreciate it for those four people that haven't 
uh, make sure to hit that like button, son. Um, man, just watch the documentary about Indian kids making 25 cents a day, making mic mining mica hustle, bro. Uh, but if you ain't going to make any money, but you ain't going to make any money cleaning your room, son. Love it. Just got two likes, bro. Awesome. Uh, did you already pre-order unlock it by Dan Lock? No, I did not. I have tons of books, man. At the end of the day, um, you know, like I'm pretty more selective about what I read and everything like that. Um, not to say like, I don't respect Dan Lock and stuff, but it's just like, there, I have so much on my plate these days that I have to be very selective of what I read. And if I do read something, it's not going to be just for, I mean, some of the times it's for fun, I guess. I mean, I'm a weird guy, man. I read marketing books just for freaking fun, bro. So like, <laughs> that's just me. But um, no, I did not read Unlock It by Dan Locke and stuff. But I might go Closest in Black. I'm still debating like if I should be book the ticket or not. Um, but because spending a few days like not closing and all that. Oh, it's going to be a lot of money, bro. <laughs> On the table now. I'm just like really busy and I just want to make sure that any if I do take time off, it's really worth it and stuff too. But I should probably should go. Just to go visit my friends, visit my marketer out there. Clothing wholesale. I have my brand mapped out. Just need to, uh, I just need to do it. I just have to do it. I'll email you. Awesome. Really cool. <sighs> How do you find influencers for closing? Like, honestly, at the end of the day, I'll tell you the secret. Here's the real secret. It's not sexy. Well, it is the way I do it. It's kind of sexy, but the truth is it's relationship marketing. That is the only way that you get top level top level high ticket clients right and that's where i realized like oh what i wanted to teach was people how to get high ticket clients but really what i'm master at what i'm a master at is really um uh really relationship marketing because that helps you not only in your personal life your business life it helps you in all aspects of life because people remember you right they trust you when you level with people people just really treat you differently I'll, I'll tell you this. I was on like a closing call recently, right? Um, this is actually, actually happened today, you know, and I'm not sure if you guys have ever do, have done this, but whenever you go on a phone with another salesperson and stuff like that, or another closer, um, they don't want to hear the script. They don't want to hear all that sort of stuff. They want you to just be hundred percent real. And he called me out on it. He's like, dude, you have a script. You have this certain pitch, just level with me. And I was like, okay. Let's, let's put away the script. Let's put away all that. Let's talk. Let's be man to man and just kind of like talk about what's going, what's coming up for you. What are your main concerns and why you actually came on this call? Because I don't want you to do this if you don't trust me. Right. That's the honest truth. Right. Um, if you don't trust like our business and stuff, like what's really going on? What made you want to come on the call? You know, what problem are we solving? And we started getting into it and people really remember you when you level with people, when you're just your authentic self, sometimes I forget about that, you know? Um, but when you're your authentic self, no one can beat you USP wise, right? No one can copy you. <sighs> you're just very memorable in certain circles, right? So and when people think closers, they think of me now. Um, not because maybe I, I definitely was not the first person, but I was definitely like very impressionable and very real with people. And just very genuine because I care about a lot of my prospects that, you know, come on the phone. I just, you know, I, I look at closing very holistically. Like for me, like the reason why closing is so important is just because people are coming on the phone with you for a certain problem, a specific problem. They're coming on for a very, very specific problem and uh, they need help. And so I'm really here just to kind of facilitate that thing and just give them some advice, whether that's our option or somebody else's option. You're just truly helping. And that's what I love about closing because it's consulting, essentially. It's almost my same job as a pharmacist. When people come up to your window and maybe they're not fucking rude and like, can I get some service and shit? Like when you're like obviously on the fucking phone, rude fucks. But, um, you know, it's the same concept. Like you help people unconditionally. And I love that. You know, so what I do is really help people like, I guess when I'm looking, I don't even look for influencers. I just try to meet people but like, really, I, that's there's no secret. And when you're surrounded by more and more like entrepreneur, entrepreneurial people, people will just introduce you. They'll refer you. 
Um, that's literally how I get all my clients, right? And I'm at that point where I have too many clients. I thought I could run five clients, but honestly, max, like when you have solid, solid clients, like max, you can, one client is enough for me. Two is really pushing it. Three is like, holy shit. But you know, I'm doing it all for a reason. One of them actually came through refugee hustle, man. They love my content. They love who I am. And they just wanted to do business with me. That was the real case, you know? So yeah, um, relationship marketing is key. And I don't think anyone really talks about relationship marketing. And that's what I'm going to be talking about a lot more on my channel these days, right? Uh, you're a credible person, Kevin. So I need your advice. If you want to learn the most about closing, where do you think you'll find the best results? Um, I'll tell you this. Um, I'll tell you this, man. Experience nothing trumps experience right uh you can learn closing through the school of hard knocks uh if you are completely broke um you could if you're completely broke by way of the wolf, i have a few videos on this like way of the wolf never split the difference i think those are good starts but um honestly like no lie i actually do think dan Locke's program is probably one of the best on closing at the current moment like for a good solid um closing program i think it's actually very complete that way when you have closing calls uh, you can implement stuff from way of the wolf i use it all the time when i jump on a call with someone i'm just like hey bud what's going on tell me tell me all, all about yourself tell me your story what made you want to book a call with me today right and then and then i use stuff from way of the wolf after they're they can't kind of give me a story and stuff i understand the background well kind of answer three things for me man why why this program why xyz program why um these why do you want to learn from these people and why now why is now important for you so i'm nailing those three questions that's the way of the wolf right there man <laughs> like jordan belfort's but eventually you gotta find your own style and here's the thing you don't have to buy a program to do closing but if you want to get good quickly you need to buy a program you get it's I, I would say it's it's stupid not to because you're just there's in business there's two ways to learn it's gonna be school of hard knocks or it's gonna be um, through leveraging somebody else's experience and at the end of the day you'll have so many hours every single second that you spend like kind of going through the school of hard knocks is costing you because you could be one step further away moving a lot quicker and because we only got limited time and so many people like don't respect their time so I would say hey. If you want to learn closing, um, buy everything, buy everything you can on closing. I recommend Dan Locks has the baseline and then really buy something like way of the wolf to, uh, to learn some people like Grant Cardone stuff. I personally like, I like Grant Cardone's hustle and shit, but it's not really my style at the end of the day. Grant Cardone, not really my style, but you just got to find what resonates to you. But I don't know, man. Um, it really depends. Like, I think like having a good program first is really good. And then on top of that, learning through experience is the best way to learn. Bryn Kamenik says, yo, been a big man for ages. Could you give my, could you, could me and my boy, my boy Jay Rands get a shout out? Well, there's your shout out right here, brah. <laughs> awesome. Oh yes. Make it the worth, worth, uh, make it the most out of your time make it worthwhile i feel like closing is more helping than selling it is at the end of the day true people who close put other people's interests before theirs right um that's why like you know sometimes with closing you it's kind of like being an actor sometimes right you have to play this certain role but at the true essence of closing like after you get rid of all the smokes and mirrors and stuff like at the end of the day is really just helping people take action toward things and it is helping you have to help because you gotta realize they don't buy they keep their fucking shitty life they came on the call with you and even if they don't buy like at the end of the day they realize it's not for them that is your job as a closer right i know disqualifying doesn't bring the company money but who gives a fuck at the end of the day is the company going to go out of business probably not but that is my goal to make them make a decision because here's the thing let me think about it means like come on let's let's like i've been real with you this whole time just be real with me this is something that you truly want to do because it's okay that that you say no but if you do want to do this you're actually really considering it let's talk it out right now 
right? I'm not trying to pressure sales you, but let's just let's just talk about it because here's the truth. You're going to find a way to talk yourself out of it if I give you until tomorrow. That's what happens most of the time. I've been doing this for a long time. So really, what what is going through your mind? And it's okay to say no at any time. All right, bud. That's what I that's my style. That's what I do. Big thank, love you. Very much appreciate it. Love it, love it, love it. How many people are in here? 10 people are in here. Awesome. <sighs> do do any of you uh any any uh anybody else got any questions tonight? Damn, I feel like I'm on a roll tonight. I just feel like Oh man, it's really, I have to say I'm pretty blessed in my life right now. Like I have you guys watching me, even though I don't have the biggest following, I definitely like have a lot. Of, any following is better than no following at the end of the day. People are willing to listen to me, listen to my advice, listen to all the experiences I've been through, whether it's pharmacy, whether it's entrepreneurship, man, it's, it's really a crazy journey, man. Like going through all this like i feel like everything in in my life is coming together all that work that i spent investing the, all those years like you gotta realize i've been at this for six years man i've been investing in myself like i didn't start buying books and self-help stuff and coaches all that until after pharmacy school i didn't do it i was 25 years old when i graduated i didn't know jack shit but as i um lived with joe that really started the whole entrepreneur nor journey uh, when Ramit Sethi really got into entrepreneurship, I started jumping onto that. When I start, that started everything, man. And I look at my friends, like I love my friends, man. But I look at my friends where they are in life, and maybe I'm not making as much as a pharmacist at this current moment. I know I will be making way more because, like, top salespeople, top closers, they're making like 30k a month. Like, dude, it's like fucking real, bro. Like. Dude, one of the one of the really good leaders on our team said that he wants all of us to make 240k per year. Very very doable. Right? That's what that's crazy. Right? That's so un to most people that's so far. Like, but it's really not that far. You just need to get good. And when you have control over your life, it makes you look at life very differently from everyone else. I I talked to a lot of my pharmacy friends, a lot of them are kind of feeling meh. They feel like they don't have any control of their life. They feel like they're capped out. That's why I don't want to do pharmacy at the end of the day. I don't think it's a bad career, but if you're driven, if you're really driven and you want to see what you're made, like what you're really made of, um, start a business. It could be in pharmacy and not just opening a pharmacy. There are a lot of different business models than just opening up a pharmacy. But if you want to do something else, I encourage you guys to do it because at the end of the day, you're gonna there, there'll be a day where you're gonna be on your deathbed, or maybe something happens to you last minute, and you're gonna just be wondering, why didn't I start this sooner? Regret is the biggest bitch in life, bro. So yeah. Uh, Abner says I'm about to join HTC program within two weeks. Just waiting to get paid next week. Awesome, Abner. Like, dude, that is uh that's freaking sick. I hope you use my affiliate link to support my channel. Let me know. Shoot me an email if you do. I love to just um shoot you a video video back, man, and just congratulate you. But yeah, that's fucking awesome, bro. Um, by the way, you want a secret hack that I use? Well, maybe I'll talk an article about it. But um, one of the things that I've really learned to use recently that I was always really scared of is um. Learning to not use my own cash. And I'm not telling you, ask your mom for money. That's not what I mean. But truly, what I see top business people to do all the time, no one uses their own money, dude. When you buy a house for real estate, do you ever use your own money? Very rarely, right? Very rarely. Yes, you could buy a foreclosure home. Sometimes in order to make a, make a deal happen faster, you got to buy all cash, right? But in general, the smartest people use uh, leverage capital. I mean, some people call it OPM, other people's money. I think that's corny as fuck, right? I hate the word OPM, actually. Leverage capital sounds a lot more serious and awesome, better, right? But imagine this, if you could set up a business, doesn't it could be closing, it could be anything, Amazon FBA. But imagine this, if you could set up a business, right? And have the business set up within a few months, let's even give it half a year, as long as the rate of return is a lot higher and you have faith that you have absolute confidence that 
you'll make it happen and you'll get a higher rate of return. The inter 20% interest rate doesn't fucking matter. If you're making 40% return, will you really care about, would you really care about 20% uh, interest rate? No, you won't, right? So that's what, that's, that's one mindset I'm learning about business a lot. And plus, if you got good credit, you got 0% APR cards. I might write an article about that and talk about how to start a business like that, but um, using zero risk if you have good credit. But, you know, like, that's one thing I've been really using and really having that mindset as well. Not to say that I don't, like, I don't have the cash, but it's stupid. Like, let's say if it's locked up in, like, a, not IRA, but even a taxable account, you're going to get taxed. You're going to get taxed. Um, like, for example, let me give a real example, right? So let's say I'm buying a 10K course, right? 10K course. I have, let's say I have like a, like, let's say I have like 100K in, in, in the stock market, bonds and all that. It's in a taxable account. Maybe I was stupid. I didn't do a Roth RA, right? <laughs> and so I need to liquidate that. Oh, wait, when you liquidate your assets, not only is that money not growing anymore, but you're also going to get taxed on that. So you get double dinged, right? So that then at that point, you're just like, oh, fuck. Okay. Um, um, why not just put it on my credit card? And I'll just pay it off slowly, right? See, the problem is when you use credit cards to buy liabilities, then you're fucking yourself. And this is a really hard concept to drill in people because, and it took me a long time to really get this through because I've always been kind of risk averse, right? Um, and at the end of the day, it's a self-confidence issue, if anything. But all smart businesses, they borrow money to start up, right? Because it gives it's like pouring fuel on the fire. And if you can get it started up before before um before like <coughs> usually I like to give a set like time to kind of like for failure, right? So let's say if I can only make minimum like on a 20% APR card, right? 10 G's. AP, I think it breaks down to $225 per month. Like, is $225 really going to put me in the poorhouse? Probably not. One payment, two payments, even four payments, not going to put me in the poorhouse, right? So if I can set up a successful business or something like that, then it's totally, it's totally worth it. And then have the business pay for its own expenses, it's worth it. Then I don't have to liquidate my stocks. I don't have to do any of that. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. I think it's really important to just to um, stay cash heavy sometimes, you know, and not when you're setting up a, especially like arbitrage business. So if you don't want arbitrage, it's flipping. That's all it is, right? When you're doing an arbitrage business, like um, it makes a lot of sense. Even a service-based business, it makes even more sense, right? Because service-based business, like if you're doing closing or marketing or anything like that, you don't have any inventory. You like... Like for me, when I run Refugee Hustle, I have zero inventory. I just have to pay for domain, have to pay for an email list, but that's very, very little. Let's say if I spend even $500 per year on my domain and stuff, if I'm flipping like different products to affiliates and stuff like that. Um, I mean, and like, let's say if I need a new camera to shoot a new course or something, why not borrow it? And then as long as I'm going to execute and make sure that I'll do everything in my power to get my return on investment as soon as possible, then the business will just pay for itself, right? So I think it's a very important concept. I recommend you guys just try to do it once in your life and you'll look at money very differently. Jonathan Lee says, I'll leverage capital. What are your thoughts about Dan Pena's? Uh, I'm going to Dan Pena's. I don't, I don't really have a opinion, but I want to learn merging acquisitions from him because that's what he teaches. And I think that's the next level of closing. And I want to, it makes me very uncomfortable going, but gotta do it, man. What do you think about investing through a bank through Wells Fargo? I actually break that in my full course. I don't think I break it down in my thing, but <clears throat> to give you the short answer about <clears throat> CDs and shit, losing propositions, bro, you're still losing to inflation. You're just not losing as fast and your money's locked up. Bad prop. I would say uh, if you don't need the money right away, Throw it into your for uh throw it into your Roth IRA. If you don't have a <clears throat> if you like if you have a 401k, make sure that you uh, ma max it to not absolute max. I would say max it up to the match. 
Roth IRA, Roth IRA, and then you have an option to throw more money in your 401k. Or if you want more immediate money, you can throw it in a taxable account. That's what I would do, right? I'm gonna have to re head off now. So I'll have to save this to watch this later. Have have a good one, Yi. Thanks again. No problem, Riddell. Really, really appreciate it. Love just helping you guys and just talking. And I'm not gonna lie, this is like one of the highlights of my week. I mean, it's not the highlight of my week, but I do enjoy talking to you guys when the trolls aren't here, bro. <laughs> so yeah. <clears throat> Woo! Dude, I've been closing all day. My voice is getting fucked. Actually, I haven't I lied. I didn't I haven't been closing all day. Like today was pretty pretty shit shit um uh, shit day for me most of my things didn't most of my appointments didn't show up uh shit just happened it wasn't that great but you know that's ups and downs of business uh it's not like a nine to five job you don't get consistent pay but you, sometimes you're hot when you're hot and sometimes you're not hot when you're not hot <laughs> you have slow days that's what i'm just trying to say and if you you can't get used to that you shouldn't do business um because I mean, just like if you think about, and here's an important thing too: what rich people look at differently than um, than poor poorer people or non-business people, entrepreneurs versus non-entrepreneurs, they look at investments through a fiscal year, right? So they might be taking an L for the first six months, but very quickly, if you uh, like if you play your cards right, Maybe month six, your you, your product launches or something like that, or maybe you create an online course like like I did, like with investing, right? Once you create that online course, then your sales starts uh, growing and stuff like that, and then you can actually start making sales. So so many times people look at things at a too short of a window. They look at month per month, but really you should be looking at things from a quarterly level or even a fiscal year level as well. So yeah, woo, man talking a lot guys uh send me more questions man otherwise i'm going to be ending my stream relatively soon i guess because uh you know your boy gotta eat bro <laughs> i'm like starving today not really i'm not starving but like i i would like to uh just kind of kick it with like some of the other friends and just call call them up and stuff but yeah man oh and i'm not gonna lie man my youtube has has been um kind of taking the back burner recently too i haven't been investing as much time i'm like behind on videos my channel manager was like kevin we gotta get some videos out i'm just like yeah you're right bro like i really do need to get some videos out but just don't don't have the enough time i guess right or uh i just haven't been putting a lot of effort into my youtube videos so yeah um any other any other questions guys i wasn't gonna head out um, let me think of about a closing thought then I guess like, okay, let me end it like this, right? Uh, if you guys got questions right now, please put them in. But as a closing thought, um, if I were to recap all this, everything that I've said really, really, really quickly, it's kind of like risk is unavoidable, not only in business, but also in life, right? There's no guarantees whatsoever in life. And you need to, part of growing up is really getting over the fact there's no guarantees in life. There's no certainty in life. Um, there's certain, you, we, we have to take calculated risks in life. And if you're more on the risk averse side, don't even think about doing business like for a second, right? Because he, you will always find if you're, if you're not, if you're not comfortable being uncomfortable, then you're just going to stay in the same place. You know, you're just going to stay stagnant and that's, that's not really a good trait for, uh, doing entrepreneurship. So that's what I have to say, I guess. Right. Um, thank you. Says Bree, uh, Brian Q says, when we going to get lifting? Oh shit. It's Brian. What's going on, bro? Uh, bro, let's go, go to barbell brigade and go lift, bro. I, I'm actually thinking about getting 24 as well. Just so I can start lifting, like and doing more cardio and stuff. I've been doing hill sprints, bro. That shit fucking sucks. Off, off running Kenya. I've been going all the time. Uncertainty is certain. Yeah, no matter how certain you think your life is, like whether it's bit like nine, your nine to five is not certain because here's the thing: businesses go up and down. There's a reason why the Q1, Q like when people do quarterly uh, earnings and stuff, it's never the same number. If it was that certainty, but 
there's so many different factors. We have to trust the only certainty that we have to have is like within ourselves and realize, Hey, can we fix this shit? Can we figure this shit out? Or even if we can't figure this shit out by ourselves, do we have the courage to kind of, are we resourceful enough to ask someone who does know, right? And try to figure out the solutions as we go. That is one thing about, about like, when, you know, when Dan Pena always says, I might be in, I may be in doubt, but uh, I might be wrong, but I'm never in doubt. That's what he's talking about. He has a certainty within himself to really figure out the answers and figure out the problems, you know, no problem. Like it's hard sometimes because I think school teaches us the opposite. And I always tell people, I always feel the opposite. Like I, I might be right, but I'm always in doubt. That's how I feel a lot of time. And especially like when I was in the pharmacy, I felt that all the time. Because people are always doubting your decisions. Doctors are always doubting you. Patients are always doubting you. They're just like, blah, blah, blah. I think the more I do business, the more I realize that I'm never in, I, I, I'm not in doubt. And if you, if you are in doubt, then you cannot influence people. Like you cannot influence people just being more timid and stuff like that. You need to be a strong leader and be okay with being uncomfortable. Same thing goes with fitness, right? Like, I mean, Brian can talk a little bit more about this more than I can, but when you're doing fitness, I mean, there's going to be a level of sacrifice or some un uncertainty. Have you ever been to a gym and you never worked out in your life and you're trying to figure out all the movements? It's very nerve wracking. Or like for me, maybe you're like me and you fucking suck at Cantonese and you got order, like order shit and people like people fucking start talking to you and you don't know how to answer back. It's going to, uh, there's going to be uncomfortableness, but really we have to embrace like that un uncomfortableness, not only in life, but in business and really ask for help. And, um, I think that's where relationship marketing really, really comes into play. Wow. For those 12 people watching, man, I hope you guys have a killer week. Um, if you get a chance, man, go refugee hustle, subscribe my email list and make sure to drop me a line, man. I always try to send a video back to you guys. I'm a little bit behind these days, but, um, I need to catch up, but I'm going to send you, I absolutely will send you a video if you're watching this and, um, yeah, I hope you guys have a killer week. Let me know what you guys are up to. I really want to keep this community back and forth. And, uh, if you're watching this on the replay, make sure to comment below, hit the like button and, um, let's make a, let's make this a real community guys. All right. There's a lot of powerful people in here, a lot of ambitious people here. And, um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Take care. Peace.